making keto jerk chicken. Let's Get properly Melissa, it's the jerk chicken. Uh, what he said. Let's go. I was browsing on TikTok the other day and I came across this beautiful recipe by Kiki Foodies and I converted it to keto so we can have it. We have got lemon juice coupled with chili from the habanero peppers or scotch bonnet. You've got sweetener coupled in there and allspice. I think it is just beautiful. Your nutritional information, your shopping list with ingredients is listed in the description box. I'm really excited about this recipe, so let's get into it now. I'm just going to show you the ingredients first because it's all going into a blender. I've got here 55 grams or four scallion and I've just cut it so it's easy to blend. This is two habanero peppers. If you haven't heard of them before, they are sort of a hot chili pepper and you can also use a scotch bonnet or fresh chilies. Anyway, this is 35 grams worth and you will just end up with a hint of chili taste because I'm going to add 35 grams of red bell pepper or capsicum to dial the chili taste down. You're going to need 70 grams worth of peppers altogether, but do adjust the amount of chili to your taste. Next, I have eight thyme sprigs, two tablespoons of garlic powder, two tablespoons of allspice powder, one tablespoon of sweetener to balance out the chili, one tablespoon of avocado oil or keto approved oil, one tablespoon of lemon juice, and lastly, two chicken stock cubes. Add all of that to a blender or a chopper like I'm doing here and blend, 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 blend until you get a sauce. You may need to help it along by stirring the ingredients. Just keep going until it looks like, I don't want to say poop, but kind of have to, but that's when it's perfect. Set that aside for now and add six pieces of chicken to a bowl. It can be any type of pieces with the skin on if you like it like that. Drumsticks, thighs, whatever. I washed mine first and tried to get the excess liquid with the paper towel. Have a taste of that marinade to check the salt content and that will let you know if you need to season the chicken. Mine could do with a little more so I added a couple of pinches to the chicken then poured all of the marinade into the bowl. Now get in there and massage those chicken pieces, making sure the marinade gets into all of the chicken. Cover and let that marinade in the refrigerator at least for a few hours or overnight. Moving on to the next day, you can see I made a double batch here because I want to see the results baked or fried and then you can get a sense of the result in an air fryer or even if you want to do a barbecue. To bake, I greased and lined my oven tray and just added six pieces making sure not to overcrowd the pan and baked at 320 Fahrenheit or 160 Celsius for 25 minutes, turned them over then baked for another 25 minutes. And this is how they turned out. Looked a little dry to me, so I just basted with the excess juice left over on the pan and sprinkled with finely diced red pepper and scallion. To fry the chicken, set your burners to medium and then I sprinkled the pan with a little avocado oil, added the chicken pieces to the pan and I didn't overcrowd it and then you want to let it cook until it has a bit of browning. Then turn the pieces over and let each side cook until you have browning on all sides. And this is how they turned out. I actually liked both the oven and the cooktop method. The meat came out tender and juicy and because we let the meat marinate for hours, I could taste the flavor in every bite. 
I cannot express how good my kitchen smells right now. You can see in my recipe, I use skinless chicken thighs, but feel free to use any cut. The drumstick does particularly well and you can have the skin on if that's what you prefer. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you get to try it. Stay safe and be well.